I haven't had a whole load of time to write on the blog this week um, because I'm getting really into the podcast, preparing for that and interviewing guests. So I just thought I would uh, film something for you so you knew what was coming up in terms of content. And so I've interviewed a couple of guests this week for the podcast. Number one, Claire Goose. She is an actress. Uh, famously, she was on Waking the Dead uh, for four years with Trevor Eve. And uh, she just has a fantastic story when she talks through her career. She basically left um, yeah, prime time television at the ripe old age of 25 because she could just see that um, she wasn't the main event for the program and she felt like she was slowly getting written out. So she just knew there was more. She trusted her instinct and went for something different. She didn't know what she was going to do. And her whole story is a little bit like that. She, she hasn't had a linear progression at all. And she's just got some really relatable examples of the choices that she has had to make between her career and her creative life and her home life. She talks about her ups and downs. She's really candid and I'm very grateful to her for that. She is funny. She talks about the importance of having really good supportive people around you. In her case, uh, she had a female agent who really fought her corner. And she also talks about a movement called ERA 5050, which is um, a campaign on behalf of female actors to ensure that there's more equal representation of male and females in casting, which is really cool. So we'll put up some information about that when we post the podcast. The next guest that I interviewed was a really amazing lady called Lee Lamb. And Lee is a COO, Chief Operating Officer type character. She has her own consultancy business and she goes into organisations and looks at team dynamics, people strategy and really questions organisations on how they do things and run their people. And she has this uh, campaign or rant, if you like, uh, called Ditch the CV and Ditch the CV as the name suggests really challenges me because I'm an in-house recruiter so it's my currency uh, to be looking at resumes and, and CVs pretty much day in day out but I think there's a lot to what she says about the fact that Really, the CV as we know it hasn't changed in format since the Industrial Revolution. And it actually is, thinking about it, pretty much redundant when we have candidates through the door in our organisation. But what she's saying is it's not really the best selection tool and the CV is, um, is not really the way to demonstrate your your individual or unique offering the most effectively and I guess I'm inclined to agree with a lot of what she says I do think there's a place for the CV and I think she does too but she thinks it is used a little bit too much too prolifically it's relied on too heavily in the interview process and, and I think that that's probably true so she's a great lady she's got again a really amazing story behind her of, of what she's overcome and how she's arrived at this place with this really powerful campaign with a good following so I hope you find that one interesting and then the lady that I'm interviewing tomorrow is called Liz Ward and Liz I found her in a coffee shop she is we we're at the same networking event and she's a career coach um, she has a company called Slick Pivot and what she does is she helps people to rebrand or relaunch their career, go from one type of role to another. And there's just so much um, symmetry, I think, between what she is saying to her clients and what my message is. 
So I'm really excited about that one. I've had to write down my questions and I'm just going to be really strict with myself, keep to time because she's just one that I could go on and on and on chatting to. I've got some other really cool ones coming up. I've got a branding consultant. I have got a journalist, a freelance journalist. I've got a brand strategist who is uh, now doing a really amazing six month contract that she never expected to be doing. And I won't say too much about that, but she's quite surprised about what um, has made her flow and feel really fulfilled and the career path that's got her to where she is. So there's, there's some really great people coming up. I think they're going to be really inspiring for you, but also relatable. And I want to try and get the story behind the story of these people to you, because that is the thing that I think really inspires and motivates. It certainly does me. I absolutely love autobiographies and biographies and what makes people tick. And when you're coming back to work, it, you need inspiration, you need encouragement, and you need stories of people who have gone before and done it. So I just, I hope you get a lot out of the podcasts. In terms of blog posts, um, I have just put the finishing touches on one and really it's Lee Lamb who's got me thinking about this. The whole idea of positioning yourself as as a, a brand. Um, there's a great Tom Peters article which I'm going to put in the post. He is a, um, a renowned marketing strategist, business consultant and he wrote a fantastic article called Project You. And he just talks about the idea of you selling yourself like a soap powder has to. What are your benefits? What pain do you take away for people? What do you solve just by being you? What are your strengths, your offerings? But most importantly, what are the advantages of using you over the next individual? So it's the blog post is really about just sharpening up your personal brand. Really important now to have a good LinkedIn uh, presence. Really important to have a strong elevator pitch. It doesn't have to be long, but just your your uh, what you patter, but you, your patter that you um, you go out into the world with. You're telling everybody your story, who you are, what you do, what you're good at, and what you offer. And then finally, it's really important to have a good personal statement. If you have to have the CV, fine, but the important content on your CV is the benefits that you bring, how you can, uh, as I said before, take away pain and offer solutions um, with the way that you do things. And the other topic that I'm thinking about is how important it is to say yes to a project or commit to a challenge even when you don't know whether you can deliver on it or not. And there's a book I read which I'm going to review for the blog by Roman Kazarnak. I don't think I've pronounced that correctly but um, it's called How to Find Fulfilling Work and it's all about purpose. And one of his tactics in um, helping you to find purpose is with this modus operandi of act now, reflect later. And Richard Branson has this um, famous quote, which I'll put in the blog post, about how he has, he attributes a lot of his success to this very thing, to saying yes to things and then working out how he was going to do it later. And one of the Facebook groups that I am in is dedicated to a discussion about having a career and having family as well. And so I posted to this group about whether or not they could give me examples of where they had said yes to challenges, 
not knowing whether or not they could deliver, not knowing how they were going to deliver, but then what was the outcome of that and was it a positive experience? And I got so much great feedback about examples of where people had just stopped the analysis paralysis, said yes, done something, overcome in their minds and had a really great outcome. So that's the next podcast or probably um, a blog post on saying yes and acting later. And that's it for the roundup really. I'm going to put the book review in of that book because I really loved it and I think that it is a, um, a, a great read with some really good actionable advice about when you are trying to work out what it's all about, what's your voca vocation and um, what your purpose is and I think that it is um, a, a really interesting one so I hope you um, enjoy that, you might decide to buy the book. So purpose, personal branding, stories of people overcoming non-linear careers, it's all about confidence, how to get it back, how to pivot from one thing to another, the choices we make, the sacrifices that we make. Um, they're the topics I've been covering in my real job at um, the management consultancy. I've had two quite senior deals or placements that I've been looking to close this week and it's just made me realise again that when you get to the sharp end of a negotiation with a candidate, it is completely down to a, a human relationship and being honest and transparent and finding out what makes them tick. So the more powerfully you can convey who you are and what makes you tick early on in the process, the more attractive you are and the more successful you'll be at getting an opportunity that really suits you and lives, lives out your values with you. So have a brilliant weekend when you get to it. I would absolutely love some feedback on what I'm doing and what other content you would be interested in, what you'd like me to blog about. Is there some training you would like me to put up? Is there a type of interview you'd like me to do? Um, is there something that you'd love me to do a podcast about? Would you like me to find a guest and ask them some questions? Please let me know. I would appreciate it so much. I'm really loving this. It's my thing, getting women back to work. So um, that needs to be relevant to, to the people who are looking to do that. So please let me know what I can be putting up. I would love to hear from you.